Hi, this is Barry Shans. I'm at Easy Way Electronics in Langdon, North Dakota. What we're looking at here today is the Massive Audio Core 1 software. I just want to tell you some of my own thoughts about it. I haven't had a lot of time yet with the software. Um, I actually have had some troubles with uh, connecting, um, making this COM port up here that says COM8. Um, when you install this on your computer, the COM number, that's going to differ depending on which USB jack you plug into. And however, it happens that the computer puts in the driver. So let's connect. And what I'm doing up here, I have uh, my memory slots, one, two, three. I can load memory. I can back it up to a file on the computer and load from a file. Measurement, um, this is for your time alignment. It defaults to centimeters. Don't make the mistake of grabbing your tape measure, put it all in to the calculator here, and then, oops, it's calculating centimeters. And it does tell you down here. But anyway, um, I'm really getting to be a little random here. So um, one thing to note about the gains, they do really stress to turn the amplifier gains all the way counterclockwise. And they call that the zero position. The default gain multiplier is two times um, so where it says 1x here it's actually doubling the input voltage um, if you don't know a gain it, or amplifiers are basically multiplying the input signal and that's how you get you know your low voltage turning into high voltage or high power so that's why they talk about, you know, multiplying here. We're going to go just kind of go across the top here uh, with output group. Um, and I do like what they do with here. You select a type, um, like custom is on top, subwoofer, etc., down to tweeter. If I select, say, a subwoofer, uh, for, for somebody getting into a DSP and they have no idea what they're doing, this suggests... Uh, pretty safe crossovers. So your high pass, that's uh, your, uh, subsonic. Um, it, it's a little low here, I think, at 20 hertz. But it is a very steep roll off, 48 dB per octave. And then low pass at 80 hertz. I, I like 80 hertz a lot. I go to that all the time when I set up systems. So, um, you can do four groups of outputs. Um, let's go into the balance thing and time alignment. It does with this calculator. It tries to uh, focus the arrival times and the amplitude to be all you know all about the same. That's the theory anyway. Very very quickly, and I've found this works really well. So that's going to it's going to uh, adjust this balance slider for as many of the groups that you've specified. Time alignment is going to pop right in here really quickly. That's really cool. Let's take a look here on the left um, below the master gain left and right. We have this um, kind of a weird little option here called stage depth. Um, I don't know exactly what the software is doing, but um, I know they recommend, uh, you know, 10 is the maximum and they recommend going no more than four. Uh, I'll have to report on that one later. Remote gain, um, as you can see, 
This can do up to four groups simultaneously. I recommend set it on the group that does your subwoofer and just forget about coupling it with anything else. That's the most practical thing I can think of to use it for. Um, I mean, if you had your back speakers and you don't always want it to be a fixed level in relation to the rest of the system, I think still the subwoofer level would be by far the more common adjustment to make. For you guys who are more advanced users, yes, you can do separate left and right EQ. It defaults to left plus right. Um, okay, I skipped a tab here. This is UV meters. Excuse me. When you have music playing, you're going to see the bars jump up here. Um, that's basically a real-time display of kind of like how hard the channel is getting driven. If it um, if it keeps coming up way into the top or the red a, 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 quite a lot, you may want to back the slider down. I really haven't done anything with this yet, so uh, maybe in another video after I've experimented with it, I can give some feedback on that. Power manager is next. And uh, this thing, when I saw the overview video um, about a month ago, this thing I, I've never seen before. And I don't know of anything in the industry that that is maybe this extensive. So let's take a look at this for kind of the first time. Okay, we have battery main. That would be uh, for my car, that's the battery under the hood. I don't have a battery in the back, but that would be the auxiliary battery. And uh, like I showed in my, my previous video, the unboxing video, you would hook up the power wire directly to your auxiliary battery. And you might think, you know, why the heck would you, you want to do that? This power manager is the reason for it. So you can set um, different thresholds and different actions to take, as well as uh, your remote output um, to switch on your amplifier. You can have a startup delay, or you can turn the remote on or off. Um, that one, I haven't thought of a reason why you turn the remote off on a particular amplifier. But um, what this can do, I guess it would be mainly if you're going to listen to the system with the engine off. Um, when the voltage gets low, you can have it um, reduce the gain by different steps. Um, if you went down to 24 dB, I mean, that's basically almost shutting it off. The power reduction there would be would be significant. Whereas in the most extreme, you could have it shut down amplifiers. Uh, ultimately, you could have it even shut down the entire system. I think that's a really smart thing to do. Um, frequency response graph. This is a visual representation of the different crossovers I have set up right now. You can get a different uh, response graph when you go into your EQ group. I kind of would like it if that could be all on the same window so I don't have to do this and like drag and drop to get it out off the screen. but that's a really minor nitpicking. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.